have to set something else straight. This is an outright lie that Jay Carney is telling that these two Republican governors have requested waivers of the work requirements. It is not true. Uh, folks, Barack Obama doesn't want to expand state power. He doesn't want the states to have more power. He sues states who attempt to assert themselves. Robert Rector, who is my all-time favorite think tank guy, and he's at the Heritage Foundation, expert on poverty and related uh, subjects. And back on July 19th, Robert Rector wrote, the governor's letter requesting these waivers makes no mention at all of waiving work requirements under the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families program. That's welfare reform. In fact... The legislation promoted in the governor's letter, the Personal Responsibility and Individual Development for Everybody Act, the Pride Act, actually would have toughened federal work standards. Here, the Republican governor's letter proposed raising the mandatory participation rates imposed on states from 50 to 70 percent of the adult and caseload. They did not ask for waivers from the work requir- requirements. Jay Carney, LeBolt, and the regime are lying fully about this. And now, a sad story of hard times from Sharpton and Jackson. The Justice Brothers. Times are hard out there. We know from experience. Recently, my Escalade rental was stripped. Rims, the O, and reclining bucket seats. And while everybody's talking about a double dip, we got a triple scoop procession at the National Action Network. We both need a stimulus now more than ever. And a payroll tax holiday. Payroll tax holiday? Yeah, uh, retroactive to the uh, second quarter of 1998. But no matter how bad it gets, we both have each other to lean on. That's what being a justice brother is all about i help you and you help me that's right uh you want to buy a raffle ticket well let me see oh you don't want to look at that first prize dinner with al sharpton he pays second prize dinner with al sharpton you pay third prize selected auto parts hey wait a minute those are my rims come back here you hustler you just think these are bad times I'm going to give you a really bad time. I didn't know I was from your escapade. Love and togetherness through thick and thin. Sharpton and Jackson, the Justice Brothers. Ladies and gentlemen, a message to all our servicemen and women from your Commander-in-Chief, President Barack Obama. For far too long, we've given medals and citations for strength and bravery in battle, ignoring those who didn't fire their weapon or attempt to achieve their objective. Let me be clear, from this day forward, that will change. Introducing the Yellow Heart, an historic new presidential medal awarded posthumously for restraint in combat. The Yellow Heart symbolizes my administration's attitude of fair play on the battlefield, no matter what the cost. And there's so much more. Now, if you desert your unit, you'll receive the AWOL Ribbon of Peace, and for treacherous behavior beyond the call of Allah, you'll learn the works and plays well with the enemy, knife in the back with gold leaf. Take it from me, John F. Carey. I was in Vietnam, and I wouldn't throw these over a fence for the world the presidential medal collection combat medals for everyone now something new yet familiar to everyone it's ron artest hey, no fool stop with the old school rap and bust it with the now you got to do representing for me ron artest word up to all peeps some fresh tracks been laying down what up this Ron Artest, busting out with us off with some old school oldies with a fresh twist. Ain't no suspension long enough. There ain't no fines that are big enough. Ain't no jail term long enough to keep me from beating on you. And I really mean hits. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Gonna find out what it means to me. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. You better not be dissing me, yo. Spreading the love. Peeps all over the world, join hands, make a love train or beat your brain. The true warrior even does dry sand. Peeps, peeps who greet other peeps are the happiest peeps 
in the world. Ron Artest does the oldies with a fresh twist and a clenched fist. He's a jolly good fella, and I'm a jolly good fella. We are jolly good fellas, and if you don't agree, you'll die. Getting real. Baby, 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 where did my pay go? Endorsements done left me now. I need me a new loan, you know? Run our test. Oldies with a fresh twist. From Concussion Records. Yeah, we put the con back in concussion. Available at NBA games and bail bondsmen everywhere. True that. Okay, El Rushmore back serving humanity simply by showing up, simply by being here, executing assigned host duties flawlessly. Uh, zero mistakes. Robert Rector of the Heritage Foundation said the governors of these two states, Jay Carney, uh, Utah, and Nevada, lying, but they did not seek waivers of the work requirements. The Obama administration is just lying about that. And by the way, it's a little bit it's a little bit disconcerting to me to keep hearing Bill Clinton get credit for this. You know who wrote welfare reform? You know, who actually wrote the legislation? Santorum. Rick Santorum was the primary author of welfare reform, and there's Bill Clinton out there getting the credit for it. Back in the 1990s, President Bill Clinton, uh, working with the Republicans in Congress in a bipartisan fashion, creating our welfare reform, our free work requirements for uh, freeloaders out there that are sitting on their butts all day. Clinton was dragged, kicking, and screaming to this. Bill Clinton wasn't the author of welfare reform. He never got close to writing it. He detested it including the day that he signed it into law. And now, the guy who actually wrote Santorum is, uh, is, is never even discussed. Here's Terry, Dayton, Ohio. We go back to the phones. Great to have you here. Hi. God bless you and Catherine, Rush. I love you. Thank you, sir. Rush, is there really this huge group of undecideds out here? I don't, if you had to vote tomorrow, I think most people know who they'd vote for. What, who benefits by the speculation that there's this large group of undecided and the class is so rate, uh, so close, besides the advertisers? Um, well, you got. Well, what do you think? Answer your own question for me. Who does benefit? Well, I think the advertisers definitely benefit. The, the news, you know, at all, it's, it's a close race, and there's a lot of people haven't made up their mind yet. But wait a minute. Are you. The money. Are you are you are you trying to tell me that advertisers are telling news people to continue to project this thing as undecided? There are a lot of undecideds, so that <laughs> people will watch the news programs. <laughs> oh, gee, <laughs> I don't think it's I don't think it's happening. That I I the thing I saw yesterday, if I can remember the numbers, I was confusing when I looked at them the first time. It's a number of voters for Obama that are abandoning. I think he's lost. I uh, forget, 14%? 14% of people that were going to vote for Obama are not going to vote for him in a poll that I saw yesterday. Uh, I It might not be 14%. Yeah, it was 14 Obama lost 14%, but the Republicans lost some, too. It, it, it was a weird, weird thing. Um, the GOP candidate lost 7%. In other words... 7% who voted Republican last time said they're not going to this time. 14% who said they voted for Obama in 08 are not going to this time around. Now, this phenomenon, see, this guy, Terry, is out there. He's like me. How can you be undecided in the midst of this? I know, common sense rears its head, and you say, how can anybody be undecided? I take it a step farther. How can anybody vote for Obama? I, I lo no, no. I understand all the reasons people that vote for Obama, Democrat loyalty, all that. I'm just in a perfect world, you know, and I still dream of one. Not utopia. I'm just more common sense. 
and where Realville is where most people live, not just a few. It's uh, sometimes it's a it's a it's a frustrating uh, thing. I, the welfare reform ad that Romney re- we're still not through with sound bites on this. We're going to go back at soundbite seventeen. Bob Schieffer talked with Charlie Rose today on CBS on the CBS This Morning show about this ad. And Charlie Rose said, it's getting hotter out there, isn't it? Now, they're talking about Romney's ad. They're not talking about Obama's ad accusing Romney of killing the guy's wife. No, no. They're talking about Romney's ad accusing Obama of taking work requirements out of welfare. Charlie says, boy, really getting hot out there, isn't it, Bobble buddy old pal? Do you see where Mitt Romney is going here? I mean, if you look at these new battleground polls that are out, he does best with uh, white working class men. And this is aimed directly uh, at that group. But I think it's quite interesting how vehemently both the White House and Bill Clinton are denying this. Bill Clinton is pointing out that you know, it was Republican governors who were asking for these waivers. And he points out that when uh, this uh, welfare law went into effect, Mitt Romney himself, as a governor, asked for some waivers in order to uh, make adjustments in the work requirement. Yeah. Well, again, uh, Robert Rector Heritage Foundation says that all this gobbledygook about Republican governors requesting waivers from these very stringent work requirements. It just isn't true. And here's Clinton carrying the lie forward. I am playing these sound bites for you just to illustrate for some odd reason, this Romney ad has got these people turned upside down. Um, I I want you to go back and grab the ad. Grab number 13. I have to tell you, Snurdly's one, you know everything, Rush. You have every political answer. What is it about this ad that's got the Democrats and the media so out of sorts? And right now, I don't know. Here's the ad again. You tell me what is in this ad that has caused Obama and Jay Carney and Ben LeBolt and Charlie Rose and Bob Schieffer and everybody else in the media to go absolutely uh, batty. In 1996, President Clinton and a bipartisan Congress helped end welfare as we know it by requiring work for welfare. But on July 12th, President Obama quietly announced a plan to gut welfare reform by dropping work requirements. Under Obama's plan, you wouldn't have to work and wouldn't have to train for a job. They just send you your welfare check. And welfare to work goes back to being plain old welfare. Mitt Romney will restore the work requirement because it works. Now, one of the only things I can figure is that the thing that drives them the craziest is when you tell the truth about them. And this ad does tell the truth in the sense that Obama's gutting the work requirements of welfare reform. And I know full Obama is doing everything he can to grow the government while making it look like he doesn't want to and isn't. He's doing everything he can to create more and more dependency in the American people while he's saying he wants to do the opposite. So uh, the fact that that Romney's just telling a simple truth that Obama is on the side of the takers. A simple truth that Obama is against the producers. I don't know what else it is. I, I, I literally can't figure out, because there's nothing defamatory in it. There's nothing untrue about it. It doesn't even approach Obama killed that guy's wife. Doesn't get anywhere near that. And yet they're doing damage control on this like I haven't seen him do damage control except on, except on, you didn't build it. You didn't make that happen. It took them a while to get up to speed, but after they figured out that they were reeling from that, then they went nuts on that. And this is basically the same thing. 
uh, except the Obama, Obama camp does not, uh, the Romney camp does not tie them together. I'm doing that myself. The Romney ad does not say, for example, and last week when President Obama said, you didn't build that to small business, you didn't do it on your own, now he's, but they must be afraid of the linkage. Because Obama did go out and say, you didn't build that, you didn't make that happen. Your small business, you had nothing to do with that. Other people built it. Other people made your business up. You didn't do that. Roads and bridges. And here comes a couple weeks later an ad in which Romney basically says, yep, Obama is on the side of the freeloaders. Obama is making it easier on the freeloaders to freeload. Obama's making it easier on the takers to take. Obama's on their side. Obama is against the producer. If it's not that, and I, I maybe it is that, and the fact that the other thing got so much traction, when they hit Obama so hard on, you didn't build it, this is just essentially a continuation of it without Romney establishing any linkage. If it's not that, folks, I don't know what has them up in arms. He didn't 